On this edition of what it's like to go to war, I wanna talk about some of the training for war. I wanna talk about the earliest training for war. Every country has their own version of basic training, even across the United States military, depending on how you enter the military and what branch of the military you enter, there are slight differences in basic training. Maybe it's beast barracks at West Point. Maybe it's hell week for the SEALs. Maybe it's basic training in the United States Army, whatever. They all serve two essential functions. And in this video, I wanna talk about the first and probably the most obvious of the two functions. The word basic and training is really what basic training is supposed to accomplish. It's supposed to give you the basic fundamentals of what it takes to be a warrior. Now, I don't know anybody who believes that just simply going through basic training is everything that you need to know before you go off to war. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos. But basic training is this fundamental passage. It's not a rite of passage as much as it's fundamentally transforming somebody from being a citizen, a general citizen, to becoming a warrior that's able to respond when the country needs you. There's a lot that has to change inside the head, inside the heart, and definitely a lot inside the human body in order to go from citizen to warrior. And basic training, as a result, needs to be brutal. It has to be physically demanding just to get the human body ready for some of the rigors of war. I've talked about the, the food deprivation, the sleep deprivation. I've talked about exposure to the elements and going weeks or months without a shower or without the basics of life in previous videos. The body has challenges just carrying the equipment and being able to be fighting or fit to fight when the, the military needs you alone is a physical challenge. And then you throw all of those other factors like the enemy and the terrain and the weather and all of that in and it's brutal on the human body. Basic training has to be physically demanding or else the leaders of the military are allowing soldiers and warriors to die unnecessarily. But basic training does more than that. It actually conditions a person, guy or a gal, to respond in certain situations. And when basic training is done right, and not all basic trainings are equal, some of them are far better than others. But when it's done right, you, you try to condition the uh, problems that a, a warrior will face and the natural hesitations that a warrior may experience on the battlefield, you try to condition those things out of the warrior before the fight ever starts. What I mean by that is you train a warrior on their individual weapon system so much and so well that there's no question. They can hit the target when they're aiming at it. They don't have to worry about if their weapon is zeroed and if their weapon is sighted in and whether or not they will be able to hit the target. But you do far more than that in basic training. You train and condition the warrior so that if there is a problem with that weapon, they know immediately how to respond to that problem. And here's the thing, when basic training is done well, you not only know how to respond to that problem with the weapon, but you do it instinctively. You don't even have to think about responding to that problem and fixing that problem. Because for most warriors in a firefight, you're so overwhelmed by a million other scenario, a million other things going on around you and a million other sensations around you that the last thing the military needs is for you to stop and have to think here is step one here is step two wait a second what was step three and four of clearing a malfunction in a weapon you not only teach them what to do but you condition it inside of them so that they are so prepared that if that scenario happens and they're in the middle of a firefight and that weapon jams they don't even think they know exactly their hands instinctively do what they're supposed to do next to clear that jam or to resolve that malfunction of a weapon. That's the essence of basic training. And leaders who don't train individual warriors to that level, 
who tell them what to think, maybe even show them how to do it, but they don't condition it to the point that it's almost automatic and no thought necessary. Leaders who don't train their warriors to that level are sending them out there to die unnecessarily. So don't ever discount the importance. It may not be even close to the amount of training necessary to thrive in the middle of the chaos of a firefight. But don't ever discount the basic training process of turning somebody from a citizen into a soldier and giving them the very basics and conditioning the very basics inside of them so that if some of those problems happen, it is so trained and so well uh, established inside of them that they don't even have to think. It's just an automatic response. This is the first, and in my uh, opinion, essential part of the transition from citizen to warrior and preparation for combat. If you come back next time, I'll give you the second and probably the more important of the two reasons why basic training is essential before a warrior ever steps onto the battlefield. So come back and check out the next episode. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.